just uh, Next day we went up the uh, Hakone Turnpike. Uh, I've said Hakone a few times in the video, but like in Ireland, that's just how we speak. It's like bride seats. I think they're a uh, Brigdu or whatever, but I'm not gonna go around going, hey, nice Brigdu seats. It just doesn't really work. So we just say Hakone. So when you hear me say this in the video, don't hate me and my pronunciation. <laughs> This thing is on the limit, but there's a truck up ahead, a full semi Arctic truck and trailer, and he is hammering the toge. We can't even catch him. He's the outside, line. outside lines, he's taking the race line in a truck and trailer. Oh, and we're going to kill a cyclist. <laughs> Here he is, the fucking legend. Toge truck driver. Yeah, it's 23 degrees now. Daily's dropped a full 10 degrees. Sucks. <laughs> oh, it's the new Supra. <laughs> Looks great. <laughs> Happy to finally see one. He's on you. No. Yeah, look. No. Ah. Ah. Dodgy spider. Absolute spidery cunt. Look at him. That's. Do you know how big they actually get? I love the way you're wearing them sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you've got. I forgot they were there. Extension head. Absolutely. What you get? This. I don't know what it is. You don't know what that is? No. What? <laughs> <laughs> NA. Come on, in. on into the toilet, the public toilet here. It's like you're having a piss and you're like, oh, I better be careful. Fuck. Or. Whoa, look at that Diatsu coping. Is that really random having a bathroom? Fuck. Jesus. That DC5? Yeah. Bang! And the poor fucking Daihatsu, whatever. He was definitely having fun. It was a bad year for it. Yeah, we went to run free. It was closed. Like I said, you win some, you lose some. Alright. Uh, we went to Expert OZ. Yeah, just. You just go straight into the coolest cars ever. Oh, yeah. Back lights. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, fuck. That's so nice. I got clear indicators for the 86. That's nice. We just went to Expert Oz to pick them up in person. It was pretty cool. They're on their lunch break, so we disturbed them. We feel really bad because lunch is obviously a huge deal in Japan. But, uh, yeah, we get some photos. And nice to come here and personally nice buy to the items. Come and pick stuff up at one of my favorite shops in the world.
these places because they're so small you expect them to be these big operations but they're like quite a humble establishment even for being a world famous shop it's just it baffles me every time that these shops even can exist like just to have a shop that just specializes in just 8 6 stuff and that there's loads of them, you know what i mean it's very it's fascinating like they just work on corollas all day and everything about their lives is just 86s and they just live and breathe the stuff and you just wake up go and do that you race and you drive and you walk on them totally consumed by them and they make a living out of it it's, yeah it's really cool there's not many places in the world that get to do stuff like that That is one of the craziest looking fucking things I've ever seen. Who loves tolls? Seeing stuff in the wild in Japan is very interesting because it just pops up out of nowhere. Like you don't see as much modified stuff on the roads as you think you would. So when you do, you're like, whoop. Jesus Christ, there. Wow, there's some interesting stuff. Went to uh, Winds Auto to see Hiromi and her uh, husband Obata, two legends in the 8-6 scene in Japan. And Hiromi went to like Formula D and actually went driving internationally. But um, Obata-san, he's a famous 8.6 D1 driver, he's been around a long time. Um, he's uh, one of the main members of uh, Guntama R, which were a really, really famous 8.6 uh, team, which were from uh, Gunma Prefecture in Saitama, and they blended the names together. I'm obsessed with all of their cars. They featured in a lot of the older magazines, and I always loved like the Winds Auto sticker and that they all had on their windshield and stuff. And it was nice enough, they had one hanging up for 25 years, it was nicotine stain in their little office and they took it down. Neil was like, oh yeah, I really, really, I've always wanted a Wins Auto sticker. And they were like so humbled that we were there and just like, they were really happy to have us there and just these like foreigners from far, far away. And uh, they had one like sticker left and it was hanging up in the office. And they said, this is the last sticker Ever. Yeah, so I asked for one of the older Wins Auto stickers and this one was hanging up here for 25 years. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they've given it to me as a gift, so that's crazy. That's so cool. Ah, crazy. Thank you. Hey. Yeah, <laughs> so cool. They got a little bit emotional that I was really interested in the sticker and some of their older history because they're pushing on in their years and they've been around for, you know, since the 90s. And you could tell like, you know, that their, their whole business is winding down. They sold off some of their D1 cars and stuff. And you know, they're getting, they're getting older. And for us to come out of nowhere, these foreigners and were really enthusiastic about Wins Auto. And I'm asking them all these, questions about stuff that I'm sure people don't really ask them about that stuff anymore. They were very excited that I was interested in all the older history. And, and then for them to actually give Neil the last sticker that's been there for like 10 or 15 or 20 years was just this like, I think everyone in that office was almost crying at that stage like it was, uh, well I was, but it was just this weird emotional thing and beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much.
so cool that they're just a husband and wife that own a tuning like a car sales shop and they build and drive and maintain cars and they're still together they still drift they're still enthusiastic they go to nico all the time i mean that's got to be rare anywhere in the world I had a great chat with obata we were talking about drifting and turbos and gtrs's and pexy power fc and and then uh, um he asked me about cat bill and then he was like oh yes i i know your card is advan laurel and i was like that's cool the winds was a was a very nice experience it was a nice way to polish off the evening and we were working our way closer in towards tokyo we drove in through saitama and just it's crazy how much you know civilization there is we drove for like two hours and it was just urban you really get a you know a scope for the scale of tokyo when you when you drive into it like it's obviously the most densely populated place on the planet what's this i think it's chocolate milk we're driving into tokyo on the back roads. On the back roads. And all we can see is skyscrapers and we're 80k from the centre. Yeah. We're doing a time lapse, we'll take some photos, we'll take some documents, we'll write stuff down, any kind of media that can be done. Just see the the infrastructure, like it's just unbelievable, just the road networks and the highways and we tried to stay off the freeways because tolls are very expensive in Japan for anyone that's been there, like yeah, like they rack up pretty quickly. Like we spent a lot of money on them and it's nice to take the B roads, as we said, which are still really incredible roads that run under the, the overpasses. Drove around the, I guess the C1 loop and all sorts of loops in Tokyo for a little while that night. And then we decided to work our way to um, the Kokofuto parking area. Just to see, it was a Wednesday night, so it was obviously going to be a, a quiet night. But we said, why not? We'd probably just sleep there if we could, because that's what pe that's what it's designed for. It's designed as a, a rest stop, even though it's you know the car mecca that it is. I just absolutely love Daikoku. It's like it just it is like the internet to me. Do you know what I mean? It, the, the infrastructure and stuff. It just like it's. I googled it so much and looked at pictures there and. Every time I go there, I'm just wowed by it. It's just an island and it's a car park and it, it, but obviously it's so much more than that. And some of the best meets in the world have, have taken place here. When we thought the day couldn't get any better. Like we drove down the off ramp and went in and parked up, got a drink and kind of walked around. And like 20 minutes later, we realized that like Smokey Nagata was parked up in his uh, famous R35 engine and drivetrain powered 32 Skyline that they built for Auto Salon. Wow. Flip goes to me, Ruben, Ruben. I was like, what? What's up, man? He was like, um, Smokey Nagata is standing right beside you. And I was like, <laughs> What's going on here? Smokey Nagata was standing right beside me, taking pictures of cars like we were. He was taking pictures of of an R35, your childhood hero since you're 13 or 14, drooling over top secret cars and he's standing right beside you. Don't panic. It's okay. Next thing, he walks over to me and goes, oh, very famous man and i'm like yeah i know you're famous and he's like no no and he started pointing at this he's showing me a gtr brochure and he's like oh show me a picture of this man and he's like very famous and he was pointing to this same guy man over here and it's just uh, yeah 
Just smoky, yeah. Yeah, 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 I know. Smoking a guy that was trying to tell me there's a famous man over there, Hiroshi Tamura. So Tamura-san is a product in chief of the GTR brand since 1997, I think. He's responsible. He's he's responsible for the end of the, the development of the R34 GTR, and he's almost completely in charge of the development of what is now the R35 GTR. So Mr. Nismo, he's called, and he was standing right there smoking a guy and I was like, yeah, yeah, famous man. Nissan is here, the guy who, the boss of Nissan GTR, and he's trying to tell us there's a famous guy here when he, he's the fucking famous guy. Yeah. I can't believe that just happened. There he is. There's his car. That's the boss of Nissan GTR. Yeah. They were there for some sort of American, like, TV special or some sort of thing with CNET. They'd flown over and they'd organized this with Dino from Speed Hunters. We're just jammy fuckers. We just rocked in and there we were. We just were right in the middle of Smokey and Tamura-san. It was, yeah, I, I cannot believe that happened. I mean, Smokey is, he's a legend. He's an idol from when we were younger. I mean, the first person from Japan that any of us found out about when we were younger through the magazines, the English magazines like Max Power and stuff was Smokey Nagata. We didn't hear about Suchiya first or any of these people. The first Japanese kind of icon that we all learned about, our generation definitely, is Smokey Nagata. High speed run over in the UK, over in Germany and stuff. He was the main man and yeah, to meet him in person, he was so humble and cool and he just, he was telling us that the other guy was famous and yeah, I don't know. That was one of the coolest experiences ever. And like, a lot of people there didn't seem to really appreciate it. And we were just like starstruck. And it's very rare for me to feel that way. And I didn't know what to do. We just randomly went there to just sleep and probably, you know, just have a look. And then we ended up stumbling into one of the coolest parts of the whole trip. Like chatting to Tamora-san and stuff and chatting to Smokey for the night. Like, oh my God. That's a dream come true, like, you know, one of the most important guys at Nissan and then one of the most important tuners of all time just hanging out with us for a few hours, shooting the shit, talking about all sorts of stuff like... Mr. Tamora is actually called the Nismo brand guardian. That's great. Anyway, while speaking to him, uh, he told us that uh, Bayside Blue, the R34 color, is the color that... Uh, he created and he called, he wanted to call it Wangan Blue. And I was like, what? You know, Wangan Blue? And I was like, what? Tamora San said that um, he originally wanted to call Bayside Blue Wangan Blue. And um, he thought that that's what the color encapsulated, that's what the car encapsulated, that's what he wanted to call it. Um, but he, they had an argument at Nissan and Nissan someone in charge wanted to call call the color Bayside Blue and he said no 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 this this is not going to work and they said we think Bayside Blue will appeal to the foreign market more the the color was called Bayside Blue but he said this color on this car that's here tonight the R35 is actually the same paint it's the same color and he wants this color now to be called Wangan Blue
every time something bad happened or every time we were tired in Japan like uh, we just it, we just got this like boom you're in Japan lads we I've got a lot more to show you every time we thought it was over or we thought it was like yeah it's winding down now boom it's Japan like and th before we left Ireland we were like mm, a bit apprehensive is is this going to be everything the first trip was is this going to be is as much are as many things going to happen are we going to get these experiences and my god japan just reassured us and gave us a big like yeah i'm here i'm still alive and kicking might be a little bit harder to find what you're looking for but when you find it it's there and it's in droves and they're really trying to hang on to the culture they have and the passion they have and it's still there Take care, man. What a car. It's going back 20 years now. Eventually then they headed off and then we kind of just walked around for a while just trying to absorb uh, Daikoku. I think we need a drink after that moment. This is how great Japan is. About 20 minutes ago, Smokey and the chief engineer from Nissan for the GTR was here. And then 10 minutes later, a Fee Panda cruises in and just parks up. That's how random and cool this place is. There's just stuff coming and going all the time. So uh, after our eventful night, we're going to stay in Casa del Alfard in a pretty special place. We're just going to sleep here at Daikoku because... Why not? Daikoku Futu parking area! Because it's fucking great! Anytime you go there, there's people coming and going all the time, which made it into a probably the worst place ever to try to get some sleep because we thought it would quieten down after like five or six o'clock in the morning, but it just kept going. There was people driving in and out all night, revving, racing, you name it. The roads don't stop. The bed setup. It's our Fortnite. So we're used to the setup now. It's my bed. Comfort. Black 
you woke up the next morning after getting about 20 minutes sleep and <laughs> it was horrible but it was great because we met Smokey Nagata and Tamora San and we were in Daikoku Fudo like in our Alfar like like it's just you know the holiday of a lifetime Casa del Alfard. Uh, we're in the same place you were three hours ago. Yeah, we're, we're here, I guess. We're still in Daikoku. Oh. <laughs> it's a pretty surreal place to be waking up, even though we had the worst sleep in the world because. The traffic on these roads just does not stop at it's all. These nine motorways that are going around here. I don't know if you can see, but there's just one, two, three, four, five, there's another one on the other six, seven, eight. It's non stop. Fresh, ready to take it on again. So last night we had a little bit of Tetris. Oh. With the fucking. The setup, so now it goes back. How does it go back? We got a particular That's system. Routine, not the last five days to go. There's the battery box. The battery box. We love the battery box. It's very light, though, which is lovely. <laughs> morning we were going to JDM Distro's uh, Japanese depot to finally drop off the golden bonnet that's been plaguing us in the back seat and uh, drop off the magazines and the battery box and a few other bits and uh, it's cool to see JDM Distro on the other side they gave us a tour of the warehouse where they build all the pallets and stuff and just where all the parts end up when they're waiting to be shipped to Ireland and yeah I thought it was interesting to just drop off parts and then collect them on the other side then a couple of months later Great. Two weeks with the hood. Yeah. We're dropping it off. Battery box and box of mags. This is where you make everything, is it right here? Yeah. It's the same. It looks the exact same. same. <laughs> Just a different color. Yeah. <laughs> same boxes, same everything. Yeah, definitely a bit warmer. Picked up the bonnet off Robin Osaka. It came the whole way with us on this adventure so far. In the back. Uh, in the back of the Alphard. Got a box of magazines that we got off Rob. And it's really cool. M Factory box. So this stuff's getting dropped back to JDM Distro. We're going to pick it up on the other side in a couple of months when it goes across on the container. So, yeah, pretty amazing. Great. Kind of funny. See you, bonnet. Now we will leave and have more space in the Alphard. So yeah, Japan is full of fancy electric toilets. <laughs> Here's the first toilet that uh, yeah, literally just squat and take a shit on the floor. So won't be having a poo here. Oh, I love it so much. After that, then we went to uh, Yashio factory for a quick look as we were working our way out of the city. Um, that's pretty cool, it was nice to see that stuff in person.
Kazama Auto used to be the place where power vehicles used to operate out of and uh, most of the iconic uh, cars that came to Ireland in our um, I'd say Japanese import boom came from power vehicles. So we kind of just geeked out looking at this spot where like 90% of the cars we used to drool on years ago were photographed and Kazama was a little bit confused. He's wondering why we were getting excited about his, his doors around the corner, which uh, yeah, power vehicles are in Abisio now, so they're not really there anymore, but uh, he's a really nice guy. He showed us all his D1 cars and stuff. He's a little bit apprehensive at first, but he kind of warmed up to us, gave us a look around. Then we worked our way up to Sakuba. Um, on the way, we noticed that the, the age and population of Japan, like, wow, there was no young people out in the countryside, like, watching people in their, like, 70s, farming the land, a lot of abandoned buildings, like, places, just towns that look like nobody lived in them anymore. Obviously, like, these places are, what are they gonna be like in 20 years? I mean, Japan has a massive age and, like, a problem, like, most people are going to be over the age of, 60 or 70 like in the next 30 years like they have a huge aging population and seeing like people out in the countryside like just in their 70s and 80s driving tractors and just standing around like there was no youth anywhere to be seen the whole way up to Sakuba and it really opened their eyes to like I guess the yeah the aging problem that they have over there. But uh, we love Sakuva, who doesn't? We drove in and the place was just closed. <laughs> An old security guard guy just came over and he didn't know why we wanted to be there. I took a pee in a bush because I, I needed to go to the toilet. So I had a wee at Sakuva. Um, kind of kicked us out then. He was just like, there's nothing happening, guys. I thought he'd let us in for a look, but uh, no, nah, he was having none of it. So we went to, uh, back across the street, there was a load of really cool shops that looked like they're closed down, but there was a cool march there that I followed on the internet, which was actually the inspiration for my car. This March race car is absolutely so cool. I followed this guy on the internet and uh, we're just at what looks like a, an old race shop here at Sakuba. There's two more March race cars on SSR Mark IIs just in behind the glass. Amazing. They've got fuel cells fully stripped out. I have a Potenza sticker in the same place. It's so cool. This car, it's amazing. Somewhat abandoned Starlet GT. I can't get over these cars, I've never seen them before. There's another Marge. Yeah, and then you look in and it's a fucking load of stuff. Loosely what I try to do with my oak. I'm in March Heaven. Yeah. 
after that then we kind of just like got on our way and drove up towards Utsunomiya which is a strange city it's definitely not really a touristy city the last time we stayed there we got a weird vibe they didn't really want us there I, I don't know what it is about that place we got a hotel room had some nice uh, gyoza Utsunomiya is apparently famous for its gyoza so walked around had a few beers and uh, yeah. Uh, yeah four years Four years in Japan, but we originated from Schligach. We came down off the mountain, worked our way across the Atlantic, then across the Pacific, and eventually We're back landed up. in. Uh, We're back up. Where are we? <laughs> Neil, what have we just discovered? Right, Where are we right found here? this like uh, stagy uh, camera car. It's got a 17 inch wheels, it's got Alcon brakes, right? But it's got Momo tires! <laughs> Momo tires! And you know what? Those girls don't give a fuck about Momo tires. <laughs> Momo tires. Man, Momo tires. Momo tires. You that. And you nah. would, you would not get that. Alcons and Momos. Momo tires. Nissan, Achiroku, Sanni, Sanni, Toyo tire, Panasonic. Um. Oh. <laughs>